All right, congratulations everyone for making it um, until after lunch and being here, so I really appreciate that. Um, it's cool to see you guys here because I wasn't very sure if I was going to make it because I literally landed in KLIA like 40 minutes ago. <laughs> Yay, mass. <laughs> anyway, uh, it's my honor and privilege to be here. And if you're wondering, um, let me just show of hands who has heard of HubSpot before. All right, great. Okay, so then it makes complete sense, right? To be at an e-commerce conference talking about marketing automation and to have us. So why is that? Um, oh, okay, it's okay. The screen has gone down. So basically, HubSpot is a marketing, sales, and service um, automation SaaS or software. Um, it is based out of Boston, so that's where um, HQ is. Um, it was started by two nerds, and I'm not sure if you guys are familiar, but we kind of coined the phrase and made inbound marketing a popular thing. Um, but then at the core of it all is we do marketing automation, sales automation, and services. So today, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tag team with my colleague Wing Hong. So, Wing Hong is based out of Malaysia. He's got an agency here. It's called Launchpad. So we have agencies like this across Southeast Asia. And what we do is they are like the HubSpot presence in the different cities. So we are based in Singapore, but then um, we have clients all across Southeast Asia. And so we have agency partners there as well. So Wing Hong will take you through the fundamentals of marketing automation. So to be like 100% transparent um, in the time that we're given, so we've got about 30 minutes. So today is going to be uh, like a crash course. So if you're already doing marketing automation, it might be a little bit like beginner for you. But if you want to like refresh and remember again why you're doing marketing automation, you're in the right place. So he's going to do fundamentals. And um, I'm holding in my hand here a worksheet, which I'll pass around later just before I come back on stage because this is what you guys are going to walk away um, from this room having learned something new. We're going to map out um, some simple flows, um, especially if you're an e-commerce business. Um, this is going to help you a lot. So without further ado, I'm going to pass it over to Wing Hong, and I will come back um, after his presentation. Thank you, guys. Some technical issue here. All right. <laughs> Sorry for the technical issue. But hey, um, today the topic we're going to cover, we're going to talk about marketing automation for growth. I believe a lot of you guys here, may I ask how many of you here run an e-commerce company? Sell something online. Okay. So I believe um, it's not something, I'm not going to go in depth. We only have around 30 minutes but I'm going to share with you guys some of the things that we have done and some examples so you can visualize it better. How does marketing automation look like? Is everyone okay so far? All right. So my intention today is to share with you guys how to create an inbound marketing automation strategy that is human, helpful, and that can build trust. Uh, I have introduced myself. I'm the founder and director of Launchpad. And today's main agenda, there's five. First, we will cover what is inbound marketing. Just now, I'm glad that a lot of you guys already know what, uh, what HubSpot is. But we're going to share a bit more about what is inbound marketing. Then we're going to go into the topic of the day, which is marketing automation. Then I will share with you guys three examples of a workflow that I believe that all of the uh, e-commerce companies should have. Then I'll pass the stage back to Pras, where she will go through the worksheet with you. We actually have a worksheet, so make sure you stay until the end. We pass you a free worksheet that you can immediately work on something based on what you learned today. Okay, and then the, there will be a Q&A session uh, at the end. So let's go into inbound marketing overview. How many of you saw this graph before? Yes, and how many of you are actually applying this to your business? Currently, anyone? Show of hand. Okay, so this is what we call an inbound methodology. If you ask me, I believe that the number one mistake that most marketers make is actually not understanding timing. And what do I mean by that? I saw this post a couple weeks ago on LinkedIn. Yeah, I saw this post a couple, couple weeks ago on LinkedIn, and it's basically a guy holding up a will you marry me sign. You can see it. 
So ladies in the room, if a guy walks up to you like this, how would you react to him? How many of you here would say yes? I believe no one. Uh, unless someone like really desperate, maybe will say yes. <laughs> okay. But what I want to explain here is, if you see in a relationship, it would be very weird to walk up to a, someone like a stranger and say, hey, will you marry me? But why are we doing this every day in our business? It's actually happening. If you think about it, when you do your marketing, when you have a product, let's say, and you want to run a Facebook ad, what is the message that you say? My product is really good. It's good for you. Buy now. I have an offer. Buy now. But does the, the person who see your ad, do they know what your brand stands for? Is there a rapport built between you and them? It's very important. So first step must always understand how to do the right thing at the right time. Normally, uh, consumers will generate, I mean, uh, will consume three to five different contents before they even talk to the sales rep. People are getting smarter. This is what's happening. So you imagine you want to buy a car. What will you do first? Anyone? You search. Maybe you go to the, maybe you like Mercedes. You go to Mercedes website, you see, hey, which one is for me? What do you do after that? Maybe you go to Carlist to check price whether I want to buy first hand or I want to buy second hand. Then after that, what do you do? Maybe you read some review, yes. Maybe you read some review, you go to Portan. Then what's next? You go to like, drive it, test drive. Yeah, maybe it's right. If it's right for you, then you go for test drive. If not, maybe like me, I would go to YouTube to search for car reviews. I'll do brands comparison. I'll see how it drives in real life before I commit my time. Then I go to the website, arrange for a test drive. Then if I drive it and I love it, I buy it. Correct or not? So in your business, you also need to think about this. There are four different stages. Attract, convert, close, and delight. Most of us, most of the brands, even when I, when I was starting out, I straight away jumped to close for people who don't even know me, who don't even know my brand. So we need to think about when our clients are doing the research or when they are searching something, are we there to help? That's a question I want to leave to you guys for food of thought. So what is inbound marketing? Inbound marketing, like mentioned, there's four stages, attract, convert, close, delight. For us, our goal is to provide them value for each stage so we can prepare them to warm them up until they are ready to become our client. It's about providing value. But most people stop when they become your client, but we don't just stop there. We want to make this client become our promoter as well. So later on, some of the examples that I share with you, you're going to learn um, what can you do so that every time you get a client, you can get three more. Every time you get one, you can get another three. Is that all right with you? All right? Okay. So for that, are you there when they need you? Now let's go into our main topic of the day, marketing automation. There are many marketing automation tools out there, but today we are just going to talk about this one because not enough time. We're just going to talk about the HubSpot workflow. So be aware that um, marketing automation is not a sole strategy that works if you just apply it, but it's about understanding the flow, understanding each stage, what do you need to provide to your client, and then the tool is here to help you make it easier. So just now we mentioned about this. How many of you want to see a real-life sample about the inbound marketing? Okay, thank you. So this is about a client that we served previously. It's a, this client is a brand that provides um, maternity products to pregnant ladies and ladies who just deliver their baby. For, uh, in another word, mothers. Uh, okay? So they provide like uh, hip support, uh, maternity bras, all these products. So here is how their um, stages look like. For the attract stage, before we even do this, right, actually we conducted a lot of survey and research and we understand what the mother's market wants to know. What is their need? What is their common challenges? What are their pain points? How do we do that? It's by Google research 
and also by doing surveys. So we understand that uh, what they need after we figure out about that, we created contents that help them solve their problem. One of the problem is they don't know what kind of food they can eat so to, uh, during pregnancy to, uh, to remain healthy. The other one, a lot of them face hip problem. You know when the baby is very heavy, right? So when, the, when you have different posture, they might need different support or there are different ways for them to solve their problems. So we pro provided this kind of contents and we generated it. How many of you here believe that if you generate this kind of content who can solve their problem, then it will attract them? Yeah, so that's exactly what we did. But you might have a question in your head right now is, how does creating this kind of content links to getting a sales? How is it linked? It is. So I'm going to explain to you in, uh, what, what is this four step. So after this, from the, from the, if you look at this, right, from stranger, they now visit your website, read your stuff. What's next? We need to convert them into a lead. What does a lead mean? A lead means you have their marketing details, uh, like email, name, contact number, or more details. Depend on what business and what kind of info you need. So how do we convert them into a lead? We, did, we actually did a research and we, when, and we created a checklist for them. You know when people, um, how many of you here are mothers? How many of you here have delivered a baby before? You, only one, okay. Um, actually, before you deliver, right, before you go to the hospital, you actually need to bring certain things. I, I think it's 15 or 20 things in the list, like your uh, IC, uh, all those there. A lot of pregnant ladies don't know what to prepare before they go into the hospital. So we created a checklist containing all the items in BM, Chinese, and English version where they can click and go to the website and download for free. But there's a catch. To download it, you have to give me your email, your name, your number. That's it. So these people, and how do I reach these people? I reach to people who have came to the website, who click these certain blocks. It's a retargeting campaign. Okay? So what happened when they become a lead? How do you close them? How, how does the first transaction happen? We actually provide them uh, like cash voucher. Any of you tried ca uh, use cash voucher before? Yeah. So cash voucher that is limited uh, time, like a limited time offer. For example, I give you a voucher, it ends this month. So you have to spend within this month, something like that. So we offer this to our email list. Or the other way is when we have promo, we push to these people. And you might think, why not push at the beginning? Why not I just push it at the beginning? Anyone have, have an idea why? Yeah, there's no trust. Yeah. So compare that. If I, if I push it at the beginning, I reach 10,000 people. But maybe only 500 are the qualified people. But what about the, all the uh, 9,500 that are not qualified? I'll be spending my money on this. Why not I only push it to those who are qualified? I know they are pregnant if they download this. So that's the whole idea. Most people stop here. But for this client, because we talk about delight, right? We don't stop here. We created a contest, a fashion contest for them to participate. So whoever that bought the product, they can wear it and then they take a picture, they share it to their social media. Every month there will be a winner. What's the purpose of doing this? Because we believe that the most beautiful person are not the people you see on, on the catwalk. It's not those. But the most beautiful person is uh, young mothers or when they are pregnant stage. It's very beautiful. So we promote that. So when people share, more and more people know about the brand. Yeah, so do you guys get the idea? Yeah? Okay. So how would a workflow look like in this scenario? It looks like this. Yeah. It looks a bit complicated. So we create blocks, right? We create contents, right? For people who came to our website, we will need to retarget them. We need to get them to download the checklist. 
people who downloaded the checklist, we need to send them a thank you email. Say, hey, thank you for downloading the checklist. And here, uh, is the e is attached below of this email. After they downloaded, we can even send them another email. Say, hey, I noticed you downloaded this ebook or this guide. So here's a to token of appreciation for you, a cash voucher. You can spend it within this one or two months. After that, either they become your client or they don't become your client. If they become a client, good. You can you should do more like uh, you can enroll them into your contest. But if they don't do anything, or if there's an abandoned card, that's where you need to send them a reminder. It will look like this. Let me ask you a question. Do you think it would take you a lot of time if you were to do it manually? Yes? And imagine uh, all this process, when someone downloaded a checklist, I need to manually send an email. After they receive the email, I need to think whether they received the email or downloaded or not. Then I need to send them the cash voucher. And then, and then yada, yada. One people you can handle, 10 people you can handle, but what about 1,000? What about 2,000, 5,000? There must be a limit. And how many of you agree that it would be better if we can automate this entire process? Yes. So this is why we need marketing automation. It helps you save time, increase your conversion rate, and it also helps you to reduce human error. How does it increase conversion rate? Anyone have an idea? So imagine you walk to a shop and you talk to the person in the counter. You ask her a question. Hey, I might have this problem. Can you help me? And it takes her two hours to answer you back. How would you feel? Frustrated. Maybe you're already out of the shop. But online, we need to, because we are still human, even if it's online, we still need to treat the same. It's not that, it's not that without automation, you cannot convert, but I'm saying, if you reply your follow-up speed, if you do it fast enough, it will heavily affect your conversion rate, your rate of closing them. Because it's instant, instant communication. When they submit it, if it takes you one day to reply them, give them the, the book, maybe the interest is not there anymore. Or they bought it from somewhere else. Yeah? So let's zoom into each of the, just now the flow, right? Now let's zoom into each part and we talk about how the trigger looks like. Ten minutes left. Oh, okay. So um, this is what we call a trigger. Okay, in HubSpot workflow, um, it's about the tool itself, right, is to help you to make things easier. The things that marketers use are mostly like uh, email, sending email. You need to know when certain things trigger, what do you do? Or when um, someone is ready to become your client, then you need to get your salesperson to follow up. These kind of things are the, are the tools that uh, marketers would need. Everything is here, so no worries. So like this, if someone has submitted this form, Let's say it's for the checklist. What happens next? We just press the console, send them this email, tell them thank you. Tell them, hey, include this ebook inside, which the email is already created behind. So, very simple one. I'm not going to go very in depth. Second scenario if they download the ebook, what happens? Or if they don't download, what happens? In this kind of scenario, we need to add the if or then branch. So if they download it, we can, oh, maybe you are already qualified. I can send them the promotion or I can send them the cash voucher. But if they are not qualified yet, they have not downloaded it, maybe I send them a reminder, maybe they forgot it. Or I can even send them more contents so I, I further nurture them before they buy from me. And then this is the third part. Promotion, if they buy, I send them a thank you email, I follow up. But if they don't buy or they have an abandoned card, I make sure I will give them a reminder. Okay? Got it? Okay. So, marketing automation is different for everyone. But I want to ask you guys, like before you come into this room and after now you listen to this, is it much simpler than, than what you thought before, marketing automation? Yes? Okay. So, I'll, uh, because time is running up, so I'll share with you three of the workflow that you can apply for your business. If you already have a workflow, maybe it's good to add in something. 
But if you don't have it, these are the three must have that I would say. First is the welcome email. The welcome email is the first interaction you have with your audience. So how would it be? Think about what would you, what kind of message do you want to convey to your audience? How do you want them to experience your brand as? Are you friendly? Are you serious? Are you professional? How do you want to portray your brand? And there are, there are a few tips that uh, is very important. For example, for the welcome email, you can offer them a discount or an offer code in order, it's like an incentive for them to subscribe to your blog or for them to download something. Not only it, it's, it's like a, they feel appreciated, but you can also get them to revisit your website. Yeah. Second thing, call to actions to follow your blog or your social media is also very important because they might not know that you have posted a lot of things on your Facebook. Maybe your Facebook, you have a lot of testimonials from clients. So this will be very useful. And then third, um, this is very important, spam trigger word, avoid it. If you Google it right now, spam trigger word, I think there's a list of thousands of words that you should avoid. Something like free now, buy now, those kind of things. So your email doesn't go to the spam. This is one of the examples uh, that uh, I think is quite good. It's very simple. It's just saying thank you for creating an account and for being with us. That's, if you want to contact them, there's a live chat on the top right corner. And then bottom, you can follow their social media. Very simple. I like it. Yeah. Second, abandon card. I cannot emphasize this enough because you know out of the 1,000 best top uh, e-commerce companies in the world, only 19% do something about abandoned card. But actually, if you talk to half, uh, talk to all the all the people who abandon card, right? You remind them, get them to buy, right? Up to half of them will actually buy from you. The crazy part is, I think, even though there's up to 50% people will buy back from you, but there's only 90% of people doing it. So I believe there's a lot of opportunity here. And last, post purchase follow up. Your flow doesn't end when they become your client. It might just be a, a, a little beginning because you can do so many things. Like you need to uh, do an order confirmation. When they bought your product, you want to make them feel secure, safe. So you need to let them know where is the product right now and when will it be delivered. You can give them a code for them to even come back to you and buy more. This thing, how many of you here bought something from online before? Okay, if you bought something from online, um, first is you need to know what kind of product you want to buy. But after that, if let's say two sellers selling the same product, what would be the determining factor? Whether you buy from him or him? It's the review. How many star? If this one is zero star, no review, this one is five star, a lot of review, you buy from the other one. It shows, it's like a testimonial. So make sure when people buy already from you, get them to review as well. You can even give them like cash voucher or something to, as an incentive for them to review. Fourth, product education is another value adding, adding uh, thing you can do for your client. Some kind of product like, uh, let's say it's support belt. A lot of people might not know how to do it and none of us care about the manual inside. So it's important you, if you can provide them a video to explain them step by step how to use it. Something simple. It's a value add adding service. And lastly, upsell. Example from the, the maternity brand, right? When they bought the product, that was during the pregnancy. But what happens after they deliver? They will look for different product, like more like a skin, skinning, uh, become skinny one, those kind of product. How to become more skinny, how to uh, recover your body, different set of product. So we need to make sure we need to upsell them. You can't just end there, it will be waste. Okay? So um, just now you see the hotspot tool, right? You can actually get a up to 90% discount for startup in Malaysia. So if you scan this code, if you want or you want you have uh, some problem you want to ask us, our team will be there to help you. You just need to scan this code. Uh, for those who are behind, you can come in front to scan it if it's too far for you. So I don't want to bombard you with too much information. My, as I said, my only intention is I hope some of this inspire you a little bit so you can make some little change in your business to achieve your goal. That's it. That's all I, that's all I ever request. Okay? So now we're gonna uh, pass back the stage to Brass.
everyone should have this piece of paper here. This one is a worksheet for you to get started. Okay. Uh, so I pass back to Pras. Everyone, uh, give a round of applause. All right, so there was a lot of um, content there. I'm trying to put it all in, and you're like, okay, all these flows sound great, and in an idealistic world, um, customers will take like a very linear journey. Linear meaning just because they read a blog post and then you send them a voucher, they use it. Um, that's not the case, right? In reality, people forget. Uh, you tell them there's 30 days to redeem a voucher, they forget. Um, they go into a store, they see the product that they've been researching and then they're like, okay, YOLO, I see it now, I read the blog post from a, a different company and I'm going to buy it. So that's the reality we live in. However, marketing automation, how that helps you is, as a marketer, you need to be able to do multiple things. You're not always sitting in the office, writing emails, making sure it's sent out at 2 p.m. Um, you know, that's the reality of it. So what marketing automation does is, no matter what journey a customer takes, you've set up a sort of process to um, you know, remind them so that you're top of head. If you're able to do that as a business, I think that's already a small win. So if you have a look at this um, planning worksheet, does anyone here know what's the most important thing before you start marketing automation? What do you need before you even start writing emails and sending them, before you even send vouchers, before you set up forms? What do you need? Email addresses. Without email addresses, without a list, marketing automation cannot exist. That is why if you are a website owner today or you manage a website, the first thing that you should be adding in the first section under segment is website visitors. That is the face of your brand. That is the first thing that people find when they search. So you're going to say website visitors are my first segment and I'm going to set up a workflow for them. Second box says segment conditions. So who are website visitors? Because someone could read a blog, they're not a website visitor, maybe they went directly to your blog, they didn't come to your product page. So you're going to say website visitors are all those who visited my website in the last 30 days. So you're going to say anyone who matches that criteria will fall into website visitors segment. Then goal drivers. This is the second most important thing for marketing automation. That flow that automation has to end at some point. You can't be sending someone 50 emails, 50 blog posts, and then like, you go on and on and on. They need to satisfy a goal, and they will automatically disqualify themselves from an automation flow. So in this case, what is the simplest thing you can get your website visitor to do? You can get them to drop an email address if they haven't, so let's just say they clicked on an ad, you don't have their email address, you can set up a form on your website capture their email address. How many times have you been to like Zalora and uh, you know, Sephora, you go there and then you browse, you check out some pricing, you read some reviews and you're like, okay, I don't wanna buy and a pop-up comes up. And they're like, put in your email address, you can get 10% off. So what they're doing is they're seizing an opportunity to get email addresses to then nurture these guys. So then let's look at the next block. It says email steps. Let's just say someone visits your website and they saw a pop-up, but then they put in their email address, but they still didn't buy. Now, you can start planning out what pieces of content you're gonna create. So you need to start planning that. Is that does that look like two emails? Is that five emails? Because then you sit down, it's a one-time effort, write out all your different emails, and then put it into your automation. One-time effort, and you probably hit five to 10,000 people, depending on how many website visitors you get, they will be getting these emails. And if you notice, do you see that little arrow going to the second column? Now that someone was a website visitor, they put in their email address, they now fall into a new segment. So that is column number two. They are now called subscribers. So what do you want to do with subscribers? You want to get them to buy, right? So that will be your goal drivers, okay? So you put down, I want them to make their first purchase. Then again, moving down. How do I convince someone to make their first purchase? Number one, maybe send the code again. Remind them your 10% welcome code is expiring in five days. 
then you can list down the different products that you have. Do you have dresses? Do you have shoes? Do you have makeup? List down the different things that I can explore and then guide me towards that journey. What should you be noticing here? What you can do is, did I click on dresses? If I did, wait a couple of days. Did I buy a dress on your website? If I didn't, maybe you can suggest different types of dresses or maybe you're like, huh, maybe she likes shoes. Let me just try. So put in some shoes. Let's see whether I click. So that's your third column. Let's just say this works out. Um, I had to attend prom. Wait, that was 10 years ago. Okay, not prom. <laughs> I, had to, I had to attend like my company annual dinner. And then I'm like, oh yeah, I remember Zalora. They had that really good dress and shoes to match as well. I go back into my email. I search Zalora dress and I see the email. I decide to buy it. I now fall into the third category. I am now a customer or I've made my first purchase. So the other cool thing about marketing automation is it doesn't end with a purchase. It makes a really good tool for retention. So let's just say I bought this dress, I bought this shoe, and the months go along, and I have no need to go back to Zalora to buy anything. But all of, my sudden, all of a sudden, um, the videographer has sent the videos back from um, the annual dinner. And my colleague asked me, like, hey, where did you get that dress? I'll be like, oh, it was actually Zalora. Let me forward you that email, or let me forward you the receipt, etc." Why? Because there was a referral code right down at the bottom. The next person to purchase using my name, Pras88, gets 20% off. And then I can forward that email. So what you guys can do is fill this up. Before you start any marketing automation process, plot it all out. Think of it as a game plan or a framework. And then you put this into the system. So after you do this, after you set it up, what's the next thing that you can do? So the most important thing, is test it out yourself. Yourself, your team, get everyone to test out this flow. Are there any gaps? Are there any flaws? Do all the emails make sense? Are you timely and fast enough? Do your emails have a support button? If I'm stuck, I don't know my sizing, or if I've purchased something and I need to return, always provide help, and it's also a way for customers to keep coming back to your site. Um, I know that's like a lot, but um, at 5 o'clock, I'm also going to be on a panel. Um, and on that panel, we take a step back and we're going to talk about why marketing automation, um, what kind of tools you can consider and how do you consider, how do you convince your upper management whether you should get marketing automation or not. So that's at 5 o'clock. All right. Um, hopefully, I'll see you guys there. And thank you very much. Um, I'll see you guys around. So guys, you have any questions? Yeah. Hi. I just wanted to ask, how does HubSpot uh, differentiate itself from other email service providers that provide automated email marketing as well? All right. That's a great question. So if you notice, oh, you wouldn't notice from the first slide because we never showed it to you. Um, let's pull that up. So what's different, um, and you're going to learn more about this today on the panel as well, is there's a big difference between point solutions. So I like how you mentioned what are you different like from an email provider and HubSpot, right? So email is just one part, and it's only one part of like marketing automation. But you can have automation for sales and services. So HubSpot is a stack, as we call it. So you have automation tools across the different functions of a business. So CRM is the first one. Remember how I said emails are very important? So there's CRM, that's where all your emails are stored. Then you begin your marketing activities. So you got your emails, you got your landing pages, you got forms, things like that. Then you have sales. So if you're like a business that has like an inside sales team or people who go out, um, marketing can then channel information to them, right? Those who visited the website, those who browse pricing pages, uh, we got sales automation as well. And then lastly is if you have a support team, uh, they can reply tickets, etc. It's all automated. Yeah. Can I chip in a little bit on that? Yeah. So um, for me, uh, last time uh, if you use different providers, right, like MailChimp, all this, all that, then CRM we use different tool, this one use different tool. The data are everywhere. But with HubSpot, everything is centralized, all the data. 
For example, I can, and their tracking is very powerful. So I can know, I, for example, someone downloaded this checklist. If they visit certain blocks, I know exactly what they want. So based on that information I have, I can craft my strategy, my, my, I mean my ads, all those, right? Based on where they have visited, I know their interest. Hmm. Um, any other questions? Yep. So the way you start your campaign is uh, for you to collect your email is through blocks. But what if the blocks itself, uh, how do you get traffic for the block itself? If let's say the website is not a, like a high volume website. Yeah. yeah. So, so the most important um, is research and understanding your target market. So that's something we didn't touch today. Uh, but there's one thing that we coined. And actually, if you Google HubSpot make my persona, we actually make you build out an imaginary customer. So you're going to like write down their names. You're going to be like persona, age 18, um, you know, like works, um, you know, marketer works in Klana Jaya or like Klang Valley. So you're going to go down and you're going to like um, Facebook. Uh, she's on Instagram. She reads Marketing Magazine Asia. You're going to build that out. What that gives you now is you know who these people are who are interested in your product and where they hang out. So you're not just going to write like a random blog. You're going to do a keyword research. You're going to find out what I'm interested in. And then since I hang out in, let's just say, Marketing Magazine, if your product is related, you can write there instead, right? And then they can like backlink to your blog. So like you're creating this ecosystem. So I would say one, do lots of keyword research, find out what people need. So like in Wing Hong's case just now, he knew um, they were moms. They were moms who were either pregnant or it would have been a mom who Googled um, three months pregnant, what should I eat? Right? And then he would have gone and written a blog post saying the 10 things you should eat um, to boost your energy when pregnant, something like that. So like, number one, research. Number two, know who you're targeting. Because if I'm trying to lose weight, that blog post, even though it's about healthy eating, would not be relevant. Because I'm not going to search, hey, three months pregnant mom trying to lose weight, like, you know, want to eat healthy. So definitely do research and then find where that person hangs out. And then try and put in pieces of content um, in all these different places. So you, you are driving traffic to your website, but you're also getting um, traffic from other websites that are already doing well, that already have traffic, but you're funneling it back to your product or your website. Yeah. Uh, any other questions? It's okay. You're helping everyone else ask. Um, Earlier, you mentioned that we could automate emails um, when there's an abandoned cart, right? Does that need to be some integration between HubSpot and the website? Uh, yes. So again, 5 o'clock, come to my panel. We're going to be talking about integrations, but you're exactly right. So marketing automation, even Wing Hong stressed, it's not a strategy. It's not a standalone thing. You can't um, you know, go onto our website and buy HubSpot and be like, okay, that's it. Hands off marketing. I'm not going to do anything. It's actually an enabler. So exactly like you mentioned, abandoned cart is an integration between your product and marketing. So your product team builds um, a, like a payment gateway or like a thank you page as we call it when someone buys. And then a tool like this that's integrated would then tell your email system whether this person bought or didn't buy. So yes, it requires integration. Yeah, so you set it up with your product team. Yes, so um, another thing that you're going to learn today, or if you don't hear it, just go home and Google all in one and platform. These are two different things. So when a tool says that they're all in one, they will offer you email, they will offer you sales and services, but it's a way to keep you using just one tool. But as soon as you go like, oh, now I want to start creating invoices, and I, I need to start working with my finance team. Maybe an all-in-one tool will not have that capability. You're going to have to buy like a third-party integration like Zapier to then connect to your finance team's tool. But if you have a tool that's a platform, it means it's open source, 
and they make it a point to enable you to just plug and play many different tools. Whether it works really well or not, that really depends on who you go after. But um, yeah, the integration market is getting very democratized. Um, a lot of providers like ourselves are realizing uh, we cannot be kamsi up, right? We cannot be stingy. We need to open up our platform because people are using different tools. Uh, it all needs to talk to each other. Yeah. All right. Um, I think that's all the time we have. I don't want to take time away from our next speaker. Um, so yeah, hopefully I see you guys at five. Thank you.